How's it going guys, I'm Field here. Welcome to a Black Desert Online guide video. Basically, I just wanna talk about one of my favorite spots in the game to, for just casual grinding money, and that's gonna be Basilisk in Valencia. It's a pretty uncontested spot most of the time, and even if it is contested, there are lots of different rotations you can do the three main of which I am gonna show you in the video. Now, other than the Basilisk Trash Loot, which is worth a cool 2,000 each, you can also drop a Rokaba chest piece here, which is usually worth quite a lot in the marketplace due to evasion builds. Uh, black Magic Assault Crystal, not the most expensive Black Magic Crystal there is on the market, but still pretty good money. Uh, you can also drop scrolls written in ancient language at a decent rate here, and obviously they're worth a lot, or you could just save them. In fact, if you grind five, you can quickly go do your own peel of face scroll right outside Basilisk. The final thing, of course, uh, worth keeping in note is that they do drop the best in slot belt in the game, the Basilisk belt. It's obviously very rare and you may never see it uh, if you're only grinding a little bit, but uh, it's there. And also you can craft it by also dropping some of the pieces here, such as the ring, which is most common, pin, second most common, and belt, which the snakeskin belt to me seems to be rarer than the actual direct drop but nonetheless, you do have the option to be able to craft the belt. So just so you guys know exactly what conditions I ran these rotations, I used only four luck, not five, because I don't have a pet with luck, unfortunately, and I also don't want to use a crystal slot for luck. Um, so four luck only, not five. Um, and then also the node is only level six, which I used to have a level 10 node, but I reset it purely because I felt like the drops were worse, but that could be placebo. There were some tests done that seemed to indicate that level 10 was broken. I don't really know. And I'm not recommending you drop the node purely off of my word, do your own testing uh, and see how you feel. However, I do have the Basilisk all on S-grade knowledge, um, not the Petrified though, although I would recommend if you were gonna go ham, maybe making the Petrified S-grade too, purely because they do drop scrolls and Rokaba, and that, that is an, a lot of extra money you could be making with an S-grade, assuming that works as well. So in order to make your time at Basilisk most efficient, I would recommend getting Kudit's Villa, which is just outside Basilisk. It'll be five million for a seven day entry pass, so you'll need gold bars um, for that. And then after that, you just wanna bring, well, I bring 600K worth of gold bars. And the reason for that is I want two buffs and I want the longer version of those buffs. The shorter version is costing only 100K. Um, at Kunitz Villa, you can also get a quest which will be kill 150 Basilisks, which you'll be doing anyway. Uh, it'll give you 500K worth in gold bars, as well as also some contribution XP. So that's highly worth doing as well. Uh, as for the buffs, there's one that gives you AP and one that gives you skill XP. Those are the two I get. The other two are actually more like PVP buffs, which are useful for node wars and sieges. So you can also use that as well if you so choose. The second thing I would highly recommend bringing with you is some demi-human hunt elixirs. Now I bring the party versions because they last longer and I don't have to keep on top of them uh, as much, but they are a little bit more expensive, so it's up to you which, which type you wanna bring. Uh, but they're very, very useful. Obviously, Basilisks are demi-human, so you know the elixir will help you do a lot more damage to them. They're also, they last 15 minutes for the party version, so I use them to time the runs at 15 minutes. So for each of these rotations that I'm gonna show you, I basically use them for 15 minutes so you see exactly what I get within 15 minute time frames. So this is the top floor of the cave rotation and um, when I recorded this I actually do have a full rotation on footage and I was hoping to just speed it up and play it. Uh, the problem is even sped up all three would take a lot of time to show. Uh, it's still five minutes each rotation at 300% speed so yeah, um, I'm just gonna show you the first rotation and then what I got by the end of the rotation. Now you can see I, I saw my mount has been damaged and I was panicking because I thought maybe something had gone to it. Uh, but it is safe in that position. The only reason it was being damaged was because of some poison from a, a cobra that I met on the road. So it's all okay. Um, but yeah, this, this rotation is okay. It's not my favorite, but it's, it's viable and it's um, at least doable, so. Um, I'm using mana pots on my ranger, even though I could do this without mana pots. It's just a little bit longer to restore your mana manually without the pots, I guess. Um, it does, I mean, I guess you could do a test on whether it would be faster to, or more financially efficient uh, to do it without the mana pots or with the mana pots and have to pay them, uh, pay for them. You can see there I got the ring, which is quite lucky to be honest with you. It's not a very common drop, even though it is the most common piece. You don't really see it all that often. 
Um, although, you know, it's quite useful to get, obviously, because you can uh, combine them into pins, which then can be combined into into the uh, snakeskin belts. So, yeah, this rotation is usually not really contested, which is another nice thing about it, I guess. And it's quite scenic, actually, to be honest with you. In fact, well, all of them are quite scenic. I quite like it, but, um, yeah, um, oops. <laughs> uh, yeah, but... This is quite late at night and I'm not really grinding as efficiently or using combos as efficiently as I probably could, but that's okay. Um, you only need to get some kind of idea, I guess, what the rotation is and what you can make from the rotation. So usually just swing around the back here and then come kill these. It's also important to remember while grinding Basilisk that um, you know you have to keep in mind what you aggro. Um, so usually I'll, unless I know that I'm not going to have... Um, or if I'm not going to have that many aggroed on me, I'll usually kill the um, the petrified guys first because they're you know just another thing taking up aggro that I could bring more basilisks to myself with. So usually I'll kill them, but not always. There's a Rokaba armor piece, so just a casual 400k. Um, and then I come up to do this little piece. Now I go and uh, do a lot of damage to those guys before I draw aggro so that I can clean those up because there's like a lot of them in that little gap there and there's a lot of basilisks as well. So usually... I can wipe them just before I get full aggro, or maybe it's because I just one hit them, I don't know. Either way, I just try to get rid of them as fast as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so far it's like, it's maybe that this position is uh, out of the way that it's not contested, I don't know, but um, it's quite nice, and you can see Medaya Castle from there, so pretty scenic. I should also state that if you're watching this quite late, um, this is during a Blackstone event. You usually don't get that many Blackstones from Basilisk, it's really not a good place to farm them. Obviously, there's not a lot. Uh, for some reason, uh, there is no mechanic in the game to allow you to get more black stones from harder mobs. It's more mobs is better, regardless of how difficult they are. Um, I always thought they should introduce a thing that allows you to farm sharps, but uh, sharps and hards from Valencia mobs are difficult mobs, but oh well. Anyway, so yeah, this is pretty much coming to the end of the rotation here. You can kind of close to back where I started. Um, but it's a bit of a pain to draw some of these mobs together. One of the issues with Basilis is that sometimes they take ages to draw together, uh, which can be kind of an issue, I guess. But most of the time they're okay if they're in a big enough pack that you know you don't have to worry about it too much. But otherwise, they're like, oh, I'm gonna follow you, and then like, oh, no, actually, I'm not gonna follow you like these guys. <laughs> so rip. Um, but yeah, this is this is the end of the rotation basically. Now you can either drop off to the left here, which I'm going to do, or you can go a bit further up and drop off. It's really up to you. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, so you come back up here and then you finish these guys off, etc., and start the rotation all over again. So yeah, that's the full rotation for the top the top cave. Um, and here is the end of the rotation. So I got one Rokaba piece, the ring uh, piece, and 522 of the Basilisk scales. So this is going to be the first floor of this very same cave. Uh, typically entered through here, which is like, looks like Petra, I guess. You could have left your horse off to the left there. There is like a rock that you can climb on. It's a bit annoying. And to be honest with you, this is much better as far as I'm concerned. If you're here for a long time, it's uh, easy access to your horse to stack some basilisk scales on so you don't too overweight. Um, so yeah. All right, so um, usually you start right here, or at least I do. Uh, which you just gather a couple of these basilisks together. Um, which, uh, to be honest with you, you could, I guess, start um, at the beginning of the cave if you want to kill all those petrified, because there's a lot grouped up and maybe they'll give you a Rokaba, but to be honest with you, I would just leave the horse there and start here. Um, I just think it's easier, but yeah. So you can see some of these are a little bit spread out, which is a bit of a pain, to be honest with you. I mean, in an ideal world, obviously, you'd want all of them to be nicely stacked upon each other so you can just wreck them, but uh, not always like that. So you can see I'm just making sure I get rid of all the um, all the petrified first um, if there's if there's going to be possibly too many. But um, I think in this area you probably don't need to worry about it too much uh, unless you're dragging something back with you. But there's another Rokaba piece, so another 400k almost. So. Yeah, you can also, if you want, because um, they will sell, you, if you have a marketplace made, you could immediately list them uh, on the marketplace and the money will be waiting for you by the time you're done with your grind. Uh, but if they, for some reason, couldn't sell, they would be stuck in Valencia, so you'd have to go to Valencia to cancel them. Unfortunately, you just, even though Basilisk is right next to Alta Nova, 
uh, your mate, of course, because you're in the Valencia region, uses the Valencia storage and marketplace, so. Um, but yeah, th these packs here are really nice. There's a lot all groups up, so it's really cool. And pretty easy to get them together so you can wreck them all at the same time. And then usually I go down here because there's like this group here, uh, which can be annoying to group, but sometimes they're okay and they'll move towards you fast. Uh, but you can see I'm having to wait a little bit and hoping they move. They have like a long animation for like, oh, there's a dude there. So yeah, you kind of have to wait for that usually, but it's mostly okay, I guess. And then you can just move on through. This uh, this rotation I find is um, the most contested. And to be honest with you, it's probably because it is the best rotation um, of all three that I'm going to show you. So. This one is probably the one you'll most commonly find as contested, but if you have the kind of AP that I do, you're pretty much killing them right as they're respawning, so it'll be very difficult for someone to contest you, which is kind of nice. The other nice thing about Basilisk is that, unlike a place like Pirates or Thousands, I guess, whatever, uh, where you're killing, you know, basically full-on genocide of the mobs there because there's so many of them, um, you can't pick up all the loot even if you do have good pets. I have one tier four and three tier threes and it's not enough to pick up everything at Pirates or Thousands or whatever. Uh, but at Basilisk it is. You don't really have to stop unless you just want to be extra secure, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, you're getting really expensive loot, but less of it. So it means that your pets have an easier time picking it up, which is quite cool. So there's a scroll written in ancient language. Obviously that's like just short of 1.5 mil if you were to sell it. Um, I don't sell mine. I, I use them to build up a memory fragment supply. Peel of Fae are probably the best solo scrolls. Um, a lot of the a lot of the fragments from Peel of Fate come entirely from uh, the bundles themselves, not drops. So you can see 629 this time Basilisk scale, so quite a bit more. That's 1.2 million um, and a Rokaba and a scroll. So the final spot is going to be the river spot, which used to be the old main spot. It was the only spot in Basilisk that was ever worth actually farming at. Uh, but then obviously they expanded the area, so now we have the caves and things like that. And also, uh, the river does extend further that you can also use, but I haven't really found it that efficient of a rotation. Usually I leave my horse up here, but I'm actually just going to quickly check this spot just to see if anyone's there, just so we're going to run through it real fast. Um, this spot has a special place in my memory because I, uh, before the expansions and other things like that, I actually farmed it pre-awakening because I was a madman. I liked it so much. Uh, I was like 57 to like level 58. Yeah, crazy. Um, I basically never touched pirates or anywhere like that at level 57 to 58, almost exclusively at Basilisk. So I know quite a lot about the spot. Uh, when I got the Awakening, obviously, you know, my AP's gone up a lot since then. Um, you know, I, I kill them more efficiently now, but I was always pretty good at doing it. I just spam Will of the Wind and use the Extraction Crystals, but uh, a lot faster now. So usually I just drop off there and start with that little pack there. Um, and then I move up to this this pack here, uh, which sometimes you can you know have the other ones follow you from below there. Um, I don't typically spend that much time on those ones until I come back. Uh, now these two you these two packs you sort of bring together. There's the six in total, so you want to try and bring them together. But obviously sometimes they're slow and they want to do all kinds of different animations before they actually come over to you. But uh, you're usually okay about getting them. So I'm trying to kill that guy, and he's like, I guess he's going back. It's kind of ironic, so we've got to try Basilisk, but what else doing this? But anyway, yeah. Um, I guess he was resetting because of my horse. That's how slow they are. When I ran through here with my horse, he was still resetting from that. So you know, petrified dudes are slow. So you can see there, I have too many aggro, so I couldn't even do damage to them there. Um, yeah, pretty nice pack I've got. So you know. I guess if you if your skill does enough damage to one hit them, even if you're out of you know, you have excessive amounts of aggro, I don't think it matters, you still can kill them. Um, but that's the only situation where you can. Uh, so there I forgot that I already used my flow. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, so I'm gonna show you in the next, uh, or just quickly I guess, that you can expand the rotation, which is what I had to do because you killed them too fast otherwise, or at least I do. So um, you'd have to be careful, but yeah. So come, up, come back over here. Um, the other thing you can do is, uh, especially if you're a ranger, you can save your guardian buff to getting back over here, so you can be extra sanic and speedy. Uh, it's up to you, I guess. Um, the other thing too is ranger, you you know, the dash drains a lot of mana, so you don't really need it. I mean, I'm only doing it just because I have the mana pots to get away with it. Um, 
just you know using siege tactics there to uh, bring some vassals together. But um, yeah, you, I mean you, you don't have to use you know the more efficient you want to make it, you know it's up to you. And you can test whether or not again, like I said, the mana pots whether using mana pots because it increases your kill speed makes you more money, or because you're using the mana pots and you have to pay for them, you know you lose money. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to test it, but um, I end up uh, just bringing one set of mana pots and then staying for a long time. Um, I would highly recommend branding your your weapons, especially as Ranger though, if you're going to be here for a while, making sure they have at least a decent amount of durability uh, before coming here. But yeah, so this is basically the full rotation, um, just as I get back to the fountain spot here, which is actually a place that I've gotten quite a lot of Basilisk belts at this very spot, um, which is kind of weird. Um, but that's just me uh, editing, sorry for the jump cut there. This is just at the end here again. Like I said, you can expand the rotation and move past into the other parts of the river. So this is just to quickly show you that. The other thing I'm going to show you, you'll see in a second, which I thought was most amusing because I was only here to make this video. Um, you'll see it in a second. But yeah, this is this is just a little bit of an expansion of the, the river spot. Um, so as you can see here, you can use Guardian to get all the way back uh, an extra extra Senec fast. So you, you gotta go fast over here and then come back. But uh, yeah, so I was just like, la la la, doing my own thing, you know, pulling these guys together as you do. And then uh, they decide to bless me. So, you know, there you go. Um, direct drop again. Um, I've gotten a lot in my time farming here, and it definitely does feel like the direct drop is easier to get than. Uh, than the uh, snake skin belt, which is weird. But, you know, still a pretty good haul from these guys and still over 1.2 million from this rotation, plus an assault gem and obviously the basilisk belt, which you can't really count. It's all RNG what you get. Um, but you can see that most, these rotations are pretty close to each other. You're not really gonna see a great deal of difference regardless of what spot you do. And, you know, um, the differences in basilisk scales could entirely be I was more efficient on one than the other or purely because of RNG drop rates. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure with five luck it's even better even though I got the basilisk belt with four luck So but yeah, thanks so much for watching the video guys I hope that you enjoyed it and hopefully it was helpful to you guys and I will uh, see you at sentient snake people